Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson flying all the way to Central Florida. Uh, here we are outside the Ocala National Forest and we are checking out wildlife. This is all happening uh, during my recent trip down there where we went to explore and catch and identify and just kind of see what was out there in the fresh waters all over Florida. And so this video is kind of a little montage of uh, all the, the inland springs that we checked out. So this, there, there's some footage like you'll see here where I kind of give you an idea of where we are. Uh, but this is all part of a water system that starts all the way up in Appalachia. And uh, it sinks into the bedrock through the bedrock up there and actually comes down in a giant aquifer under like that's like a lake under the ground very deep that goes through Georgia and the Carolinas and then it, through northern Florida and it surfaces in these these springs and these are called blue holes sometimes uh, springs blue springs and, and you can see they're just a haven for life we've got um, you know, all sorts of lilies, and uh, there's invasive hyacinth also, but we see those, we see turtles, there was a, a red slider, you see this grass that's just so thick and beautiful, there's no algae on it when you get away from any sort of city or anything, and when you're out here and you're just paddling, you know, you, cr you cross people once in a while, but the whole state when it's the wet season, which this is the dry season, believe it or not, this these forests all become intertangled and interconnected, and you can go from one side of the state to the other. There was a turtle uh, back there. So here you're seeing some of the, this isn't that eelgrass, corkscrew valve type stuff. This is more of, you know, some sort of a little, um, it might be a Ludwigia, um, uh, our, I don't know exactly what it, what it is, I, sh I shouldn't say, but it's a, it, it has kind of a Starogen Repens uh, look to it. And these fish, they're just, I mean, you name it. Any of the fish that are native to the south have made their way here. And you've got, these look little, but they're way down. So I've set the box up with glass box with a frame to film down off the side of the boat into <clears throat> the water that we're uh, cruising over. And we took a motorboat a couple times. Uh, we paddled. We walked out. Here's what we call um, a bowfin. And check this animal out. It's really cool. It's a large two foot or three foot maybe even. Uh, and it it moves like a ghost knife. It's got this singular uh, fin that runs the length of its body below and on top and ends in its tail and it looks like a coelacanth, like one of those old uh, living fossil type fish and it is an ancient fish, uh, old, maybe one of the oldest in the Americas to have that body type still. And what you're looking at here is a crack in the ground where all these nutrients and this just super clear water with a pH that's pretty high because you've got, uh, I mean, it's running through limestone, porous uh, caves and tubes and tunnels of limestone underground. And this is a spot in the topography where Florida starts to get uh, lower and lower uh, until, you know, Everglades is almost ocean level. It's only a couple feet above the ocean and this is maybe 20 feet above the ocean this is where the rivers are starting is where these spring heads are found and you can see these gases bubbling up which uh, you know people worry about gases in their tanks and stuff but down here you smell sulfur everywhere um, you just smell it and if anybody knows what these fish are I would love to hear they've they, they almost look like you know saltwater, uh, you know, reef fish, but this is all freshwater, and it's about 75 degrees year-round because of that aquifer <clears throat> supplying that charge of water at a similar rate all year-round. 
Now I know these are a lot of sunfish here, and uh, there's a couple pickerel that are young in there. There's some bass, some smallmouth bass in here, uh, and there's a lot of just native game fish too. You know, you've got like the red, red-eared, uh, red-snouted, and then you've got uh, mullets and. There's just a lot of different fish down there. So if anybody knows for sure at a minute mark what fish is what, uh, and if I miss it or don't have time to mention it, go ahead and uh, list that, and that would be helpful. <clears throat> so I was looking to collect mostly smaller fish, and so this was more just seeing what the ecology was down here and what natural aquariums should look like like where are little fish hang out and the answer is yes there are some around here and you see this uh, algae getting kicked up by the the paddle of dipping into the water up ahead of me uh, I'm on the back of the boat here and you can see that uh, there's starting to be algae on the grass here and that's because there's a farm a quarter mile uh, off in the woods outside the state park and the fertilizers have actually seeped through the soil here and started to get into this creek or river and in here's a little area where you can stop and get out because you can kayak and, and canoe uh, you can't take a motorboat through all this but you can kayak or canoe uh, all the way through here hundreds and hundreds of miles and to well over 200 locations where spring water is coming out and so this was one spot with a little shack and a dock set up it almost felt like a bayou in Louisiana but here you know I just kinda sat back relaxed rested because it was you know 90 degrees and humid and a thunderstorm had just passed earlier in the day and uh, so we were just hanging out under this covered area and it's fairly dark in the water down there you see how fish are using the shadows and things and I don't know exactly what fish those are but they're I'm talking two feet these little ones here are more like nine to twelve inches but they're not they're not teeny little fish by any means we saw things like uh, gar, a lot of gar down there, spotted, striped, and alligator. Uh, I guess the striped is considered uh, Florida gar. And uh, just giving you an idea of how it's a sunken forest there. So you get these, and those are carp, those are blue carp there. Um, they have a really kind of cool glow from the iridophores under their skin, uh, like a goldfish would or something. Uh, and you can see the rain coming off, just dripping off. It's it's either rain or humidity, I don't remember. But, you know, they've got a tin roof on this little structure where we were resting here uh, at, I think this is outside of Mammoth Spring or Juniper Spring. But you can see those uh, carp coming back around there. And they're eating worms and things like that. But this spot has kind of become a dead zone compared to those grassy areas. And where you see the grass growing, uh, you, you really, I mean, there's probably 20 different plants that make up this grass when you start digging through it. There's uh, Kabamba, Carolin, uh, Carolinia, and there's uh, Valsinaria, and... It uh, looks like some crypts and things like that. And it's hard to know what's introduced and what is native because a lot of it was introduced at the turn of the century or prior. Uh, and some of it could have even come off of Spanish ships, you know, coming from South America. And they've got junk on their rowboat in the bilge area. And, you know, so we I'm just, I'm just throwing crazy ideas out there. But... I just thought I'd mention that uh, while <laughs> while we're watching, but it's just it's a beautiful place to look for fish, and the water is somewhere between 100 and 200 feet of clarity usually. Uh, you've got palm trees like I showed just a second ago growing down underwater and back up. You've got here's back out when we got back out onto another river system. 
very similar, a little bit shorter grasses, but that goes down very deep, even if you can't tell. And right there, that's an 80-foot crevice or crevasse, crevasse. And you can see the change in grass there where it looks more like a crypt or Araguaia, uh, Ludwigia Araguaia or something maybe. I don't know. Uh, and here is another uh, interesting little fish. Uh, I couldn't tell what it was. There's also eels, little freshwater eels in here. And here we have our first gar that I caught a snap of. I know it just kind of looks like a line there, but I thought I'd pause it for a sec, just because I didn't get too many great shots of them. Although I did at the university. But here you can see how that grass runs right up to the shore, and you got fish jumping everywhere, mostly uh, mullet are the name of the fish that jump like that. Whenever you paddle, or if you're just cruising after you're done paddling and letting the, the current take you, they leap all over. <clears throat> and there's also lots of cool fish like darters and um, just funky stuff. There's some more turtles, uh, and there's an alligator. Uh, it was alligator nesting season while we were there. And the alligators don't usually hang out in those clear springs. They like to hide in murkier water and ambush. But in these thick beds of grass, they sometimes bed down. And these beds of grass for, you know, thousands of years building up and trees falling into them and so on, build these little islands. <clears throat> and the gases on the islands really get built up. And uh, you see it bubbling kind of like a mysterious swamp. And that's uh, one of the spots, uh, Silver Springs, where that was at. They filmed the creature from the Black Lagoon. Now there is a spotted gar, or no, an alligator gar. That was an alligator gar with that longer snout that kind of uh, spoons out at the end. Uh, they're the young ones. They're only two to three feet, but this is a very deep spot in the springs. You know, you go from five or ten feet deep all the way down to like a hundred feet deep on some of these springs, like uh, Alexander, Rainbow, Juniper, Mammoth, uh, Crystal, and Silver are all to name some of the spots where we filmed some of this. And I'll have more filming of me catching stuff and looking at habitats, looking at smaller fish up close. But I just wanted to show you guys some of the stuff I filmed underwater. I know it's not the most thrilling stuff, but I was thinking of you like, look at that giant pleco. I mean, there's pleco that are just enormous out here, and those are definitely invasive. Also, you've got the beautiful... Um, birds, everything from great blue herons and ibis and spoonbills and just lots of cool birds. Uh, and that's how you can find a lot of your your um, younger fish and small fish species like killifish and so on. Here's the last spring that we go to. Um, and this is the last of the deep water that I was filming for this video. Um, I've got lots to show you in the next. But here you can see kind of what happens again when uh, farm phosphates and nitrogen and human uh, excrement from uh, municipal sewer systems leaks into the groundwater. It, it really kills off things, and that's a broken rowboat there. But um, apparently this is all new, and prior to this, there's still turtles and fish and things, but there used to be you know, manatees and, you know, all sorts of life there. So this is just a teaser for the future, the next videos uh, of the habitat where I was really finding, you know, guppies and killifish and gambusii and things like that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this and I have a little outro for you. Thank thanks for watching, guys. Well, we've done it again. It's the end of another video and I am down here in Florida still if you didn't pick that up from the video. But if you want me to go on more trips like this, if you want me to get more bug bites uh, like this, <laughs> then please uh, think about supporting the channel through Patreon, messaging me if you don't like Patreon. There's other ways you can 
support the channel. And obviously, if you don't have the money, I totally understand. Uh, I don't like handouts. It's just simply if you like what you see, I can do more of it. So thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys next time. Have a great evening. Take care of the people around you and yourself, and have a good night.